Today we're going to be speaking about current measurement in piezos. Uh, we're going to be using the drive circuit uh, that I outlined in, in another video and you can look for that uh, video in the links. Um, we are also going to be using an inductor to boost the voltage or rather boost the current uh, to our piezo. So if you follow along from that video I have linked uh, regarding the most simple piezo circuit, simple driver, um, I am using a different uh, MOSFET uh, for the switching configuration. And if you can quickly remember uh, the circuit diagram, or you know that's positive, that's negative, um, where we had the power supply hooked up to our piezo, which is designated here as a crystal. They got ground. Um, and then we had a switch, which we, which we had a MOSFET uh, here. Um, this was a source, drain, and the gate here. Um, so we're using a different MOSFET there, uh, simply because this one switch turns on at five volts. Uh, it's rated and it's called the logic level. Um, the specific details of this MOSFET are eight A two A R L, and it's more appropriate for switching with microcontrollers or an Arduino. Um, all the experiments and things done here can be used with an Arduino and I also link how to use the Arduino as a signal generator in another video. You can find that in the links. Um, so this video is sponsored uh, by my consulting company Ultrasonic Advisors where I uh, coach, mentor, and guide uh, technical teams developing ultrasonic transducer products uh, both on the technical side and also in the product development and strategy angle as well. So if you're inter interested and want to know more, uh, please see the uh, description for a link. So here we start to build that circuit. We have our power supply hooked up to our um, drain of our MOSFET through the uh, 100 ohm resistor. And it's a 100 ohm power resistor. I think it's a three watt uh, resistor. So here is the difference between the other video I mentioned about the most simple circuit uh, for driving the piezo. We're today we're going to be adding a resistor, a one ohm resistor, uh, to measure current. So we know from Ohm's law, V, the voltage equals IR and this is only true for a resistor and the cool thing about this formula is that it will be true despite whatever frequency uh, you are using so if we measure the voltage across this um, let's say it's 1 amp so we measure 1 amp and our resistance is 1 ohm We'll measure, we will be measuring one volt. So if we measure one volt, we have an F. If we measure 0 0.032 volts, we have 32 milliamps in this case. And the, the one ohm resistor really makes that easy. Um, this is a one ohm resistor rated at five watts. You can also pick this up uh, on Amazon uh, <laughs> as well as the other components. There are no links. This is not an affiliate program here. Uh, but uh, you can just search them and find out uh, those products yourself. So again, this circuit here, we have the resistor going to the drain. Uh, and we have our piezo hooked up on one side there. Then our piezo comes around and it hooks back here. So you can almost say this is our crystal there. It hooks there. And through a one ohm resistor, it, we go to the drain, which will also be our ground. So essentially for this circuit, if you just don't mind me erasing a little section, I know it's hard to, I'm changing things up on you. Uh, so this is one ohm and this is a hundred ohm. 
This is where we'll be measuring current. And if you measure current on one side, you also have measured the current through that component because it's the same branch, same circuit branch, so it'll have the, the same current um, coming out. So here are my probing points. So this is the oscilloscope probe used to measure current. So we're using a voltage measurement to measure current, which is easy. And this is a another probe to measure the voltage right at the drain, um, which would be the let's say the positive terminal of our piezo. Because we're using a real driver circuit, we are not going to have flat voltages there. Um, so we'll investigate and see this resistor actually gets quite hot as you can kind of see so actually in reality i pulled off another wire and i actually measured use that to, for the oscilloscope probe uh we gave it one kilohertz uh an amplitude of five volts peak to peak and 2.5 volts offset so therefore there's a zero volt and we have our five volts square wave. And we obviously can program whatever frequency we want. And you can also do the same thing on Arduino using the tone function. That's another, it's a very easy way. Um, and you can see the, all, again, the video in the description for information on that and other ways to program your Arduino uh, for signal generation. So we have channel A and channel B of the oscilloscope. This is going to be voltage and this is going to be current. Uh, you can set channel A. So channel A is actually set as a 1x voltage probe. Channel B is also set to 1x, but we change that to be amps. Um, and when you do that for amps, not only will all of your units read out correctly when you're doing, you know, using your oscilloscope for measurements, uh, if you change this unit to amps and you multiply channel A and channel B, you will actually end up with power and the right units watts. Um, I haven't done that in this video, but you can use the math channel to calculate watts like that. Um, that would give you instantaneous power if you took this new math channel and you uh, took the DC average, then you would have your um, average real power. And of course, the best setup is to put your oscilloscope on top of your function generator. Um, and this is just to say we're using 20 volts as the uh, DC power supply value. And here's our kind of... Um, circuit all hooked up uh, the grounds aren't really that well organized sorry about that but i think the important thing here which was different from the other uh pictures uh other photos is that there's a gr there is a gate uh terminal uh so this is the input from the function generator um the square wave um controlling the uh, oscillating frequency the open and close frequency and there's all that in action and there's no current the currents in blue the voltage is in yellow if you were, were able to read this measurement here it would say this is a one kilohertz signal um there it is one kilohertz so we have these values from the circuit actually enabled so we have 20 volts and we have 0 0.1 um, amps. So uh, without further ado, this makes it 2 watts. So the circuit is taking up 2 watts of energy, um, of power rather. Um, so what we can learn, where's the power being dissipated? So we have that 100 ohm resistor. And because of the square wave, it's excited half of the time. So that's where we get, where we should have, have gotten 20 volts, you know, 20 volts with 100 ohms should get a 0 0.2 amps. 
However, because it's only on half the time, you get 0 0.1. And that's sort of the co consumption of the circuit takes up 2 watts, which is going to be, in this case, higher than our consumption from our piezo alone. Uh, and here we've zoomed into the current waveform. Uh, apologize for the blurriness. Um, but what we can see here is the that square wave, the yellow square wave. And we see a lot of ringing and noise. It's not actually noise, it's ringing from the oscillations of the crystal. There is a resonant frequency of the crystal which is stimulated by the step response. Um, both ways actually. Uh, both... Um, adding and, and, and subtracting voltage. Um, so when the voltage is high, it means the gate is closed and we are now have effectively hooked that resistor, 100 ohm resistor, so you see decay happening a lot faster. But when you've closed that circuit, you're allowing the piezo to oscillate uh, through that resistor, thus causing a lot larger current uh, that we measure. So here's a view at 5 kilohertz. So I've changed that frequency. Um, and, and zoomed in on the uh, ringing, which you can see is quite pronounced. Um, it's more, uh, the current is larger on the, uh, when the circuit is closed rather than open. Uh, again, due to that, I believe that resistor. I'm not thinking too much about that comment. I, I'm just going to put it on the resistor right now. There's another even kind of more zoomed up view, and we can see here, uh, through two cursors are set, um, we actually have a separation of those two cursors, 7.6 microseconds, which actually ends up being 131 uh, kilohertz. So we'll continue to go down and scroll through the rest of this experiment here. Um, I want to mention that when the voltage here, you see the sudden step downwards. That means the uh, crystal, which was, is now connected uh, from that high voltage. Uh, and you see the scale here is 2 amps. So we see on this bottom corner here we have a huge uh, spike in voltage I mean spike in current as soon as that happens I just wanted to point that out when you provide the step response and the only thing in between it and um, close you know it you know this the wire being connected is is that uh, MOSFET here uh, we have uh, I mean you, and you closed it therefore there's a short circuit you're going to generate a significant amount of current when you discharge this capacitor or uh, crystal. And frequency is there, 5 kilohertz, but it's not really that important. I just wanted to mention another quick experiment here where we have the piezo oscillator disc, um, basically it's a guitar pickup, and here's an electric, electric microphone uh, which we can also use to sense the resonant frequency. Here we have a frequency of 4.9 kilohertz. And this input right here is the response from the microphone. Uh, so we have a response on the 5 millivolt scale. So it's approximately um, 10 millivolts, peak to uh, 10 millivolts amplitude. from that microphone, which is powered by five volts. Now for this experiment, I uh, changed the voltage to five volts so I can also power the electric microphone uh, with the same power supply, which which is a little troublesome. You don't want to be uh, throwing an oscillating line on your uh, on, on uh, the source of your basically sensor, but this is a simple experiment here. So when I got to A resonance, 
of the uh, crystal, which is uh, about 5.4 kilohertz. Well, we see um, now this five millivolt scale here, it pretty much covers the entire scale. So I'm guessing there's at least four scales. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's say it's five. So it's 25 volts, 25 millivolts amplitude. So you can see the voltage getting much higher, as well as um, uh, the harmonic distortion, the number of harmonics in the signal will be less. Now in this case, I drove it with a square wave. You can imagine if you did a sinusoidal wave, you'd end up with a lot more pure uh, response anyways. And this again is, for this specific disc, it ends up being 5.55. Uh, kilohertz and I played around with the function generator in order to get it there uh, the next step is what we're going to do to boost the voltage or current which have to be similar um, because the more if you need more current you're gonna have to provide more voltage but that doesn't mean you have to provide more voltage at the input so here I'm using I have 680 milli henry inductors you know the, the symbol for the inductor is um a coil um and putting this in series with the crystal which behaves like a capacitor um is going to produce the resonance response which will amplify the voltage so we have a resonant frequency uh, we know from the classic equation, LC. So if we add this uh, inductor, um, and if we, let's say, increase the value of the inductor, it's going to reduce the value of the resonant frequency. Basically, you want to, you can actually tune this value according to the resonant frequency uh, you desire for that amplification of current or voltage which would mean a louder sound in this case from the buzzer but in uh, right now we're working in ultrasonics so it's not going to provide um, that same response um, so we can't hear it uh, but I will say this that if you wanted to create uh, an ultrasonic um, like a receiver and transmitter and you wanted to tune it to a frequency of choice then playing with these LC values would help you. Now you know I just told you, you can play with an L value by adding more inductors so adding inductors in series or just using a plain larger inductor is going to get you a larger inductance value. Uh, this, a similar story could be said for the capacitor um, that yes, the piezo crystal provides on capacitance. In this case, it's going to be close to 10 nanofarads, as indicated in the video, which, you know, it's called the most simple piezo driving circuit. Again, uh, mentioned the links. Um, you could also add parallel, you could also add parallel capacitance to this in order to affect the resonant frequency and also the voltage across that capacitor. And hence the current also across the crystal. And here's the, the circuit and where I added it in. I extended the negative terminal uh, of the piezo. In this case, it doesn't seem to be matching, but it actually uh, loops backward <laughs> and, uh, and, and links in there. So we have this inductor uh, and then going to ground. So what that looks like in our simple circuit nonsense, because it doesn't take much time to draw, might as well just go ahead and do it. So we have our crystal, and then we have our inductor, and we have the one ohm resistor, and that's tied to ground. And then we have our switch, MOSFET switch, like that. Uh, so we have an inductance value 
uh, between the crystal uh, forming an LC circuit and this resistor is just there for measurement purposes. And here we are using 5 volts. Uh, um, just kind of as a legacy and also I didn't want to generate too much voltage, uh, back voltage, back to the, the amplifier. We really could probably have put a a diode here uh, to protect any voltage, um, a larger voltage from resonance going to the um, DC power supply, but uh, I didn't. So generating that one kilohertz curve in response again, um, this is the response you get here. It looks similar uh, to that previously. The, obviously these harmonics right here are going to differ now uh, due to that resonator we, we produced. And I don't think I specifically picked them out, uh, but they seem to be a lot lower in frequency than the ones we had seen earlier. Um, their piece should be, so if this is a uh, one, two, three, four, five, so, um, that's one millisecond. Well, that's, well, 10 is a millisecond. Five is half a millisecond, which is 0 0.5 milliseconds. We have, you know, you can count the number of periods and, and figure out what the resonant frequency is. But... We already know from the L and C value that 680 milli henries and the capacitor is about 10 nanofarads and I measured that using an LCR meter uh, that I have. So I measured these two values then to output a frequency of about 65, I'll draw it 65 kilohertz. Uh, so I put that in the square wave generator, um, and I got this result. So this is the voltage. And I'm changing this around a little bit. This is the voltage at the inductor. And this is the voltage over, and this is the current. This is the same current. This is the voltage over the inductor, um, and this is the current. So you can see the voltage, even though I put in 5 volts, as I mentioned, the voltage varies plus or minus 10. So the voltage effectively was amplified by 2, by order of 2. Um, and I think we'd also, we also see a much larger current, oh, we got these current spikes going, uh, but we see a much larger current than we would have normally. I'd, I'm not sure if I recorded, uh, what the value would be without, uh, but the current is also amplified and you can see it's now sinusoidal, uh, which is important if you want spectral, uh, purity in your, uh, response. And, and other harmonics are, are, are will, may produce negative effects depending on your application again. Now we can also put three inductors in parallel, I mean series, and do the same thing. Um, in this case, I got a frequency, you know, and you can tell what the resonant frequency is by the semi sinusoidal response of the current um, and that ended up being 31 kilohertz and if I took this out at that same frequency so if you went back one here we had each division was 20 milliamps so we had about a division and a half. So we had about 30 milliamps amplitude. Uh, with these three inductors. And this changing frequency. We don't even, we don't have the proper resonance response from that square wave. As you would say, and the values are also, let's just say about 10 milliamps. So the current 
was became larger by a factor of three. And uh, additionally, we found that the voltage. Um, so we found the current going over a factor of three, and the and the response was not the right frequency. It, it was the not right. I don't know what else to say. Not the right frequency, because of the the ringing effects. So if you have, let's say, okay, what, what's a practical response to this? If you're trying to drive an ultrasonic cleaner, um, and yes, the piezo is going to ring at that frequency, uh, but a adding well adding an inductor won't really help there because you already are i mean the piezo if you do drive it at its resonance you itself you will be able to stimulate a um the correct response now what is done and i'll just uh throw this up here actually i'll, I'll go i'll jump down here i'll cover that part in a second but what is done let's say your crystal has a frequency of about 40.1 kilohertz, right? Uh, you might, you know, we might throw an inductor here and a capacitor pair whose frequency is also 40.1 kilohertz. Uh, just because this might be 40.5, uh, but you want your circuit to be robust and um, that, you know, searching for the resonance is not always practical. Uh, so, so adding something like this would help to uh, this resonance uh, circuit is going to help to drive up the voltage here. <coughs> which would also then increase the voltage to your piezo uh, if that tuning wasn't uh, optimized. I also wanted to point out uh, these two cases. This is with the no inductor, and this is with the inductor. Uh, and this is for the, just that last case here. Where I... Where I didn't hook up the inductors rather I had that other terminal of the piezo hook, hooked up um, at the base of all these inductors so they're not really part of the circuit anymore they're just hanging out in free space so and then we got um, this result there so uh, thank you for uh, watching this video um, we discussed a couple of topics uh, the first being the resistor method of measuring resonance. Um, and that we use the 1 ohm 5 watt power resistor, which makes an easy conversion from voltage directly into amps. Uh, the second is we used... Um, well, it was a short part of the video, but we use a microphone, um, and this is a micro ele electric microphone, electric, uh, and I got this off Amazon, and also had a, uh, it also it has a PCB and amplifier built in, so that just made it all easier. I just had to provide the five volts, adjust the gain via the potentiometer. And I would just be able to measure uh, from that. That's pretty straightforward. And you can actually trigger your oscilloscope based off of the uh, result of that. Uh, and I actually showed uh, by varying the distance in between the mic and the piezo, I was able to move this, uh, you know, as you probably would expect, you were able to move where the and I, and, I, and I triggered off of the off of the input to the to the driver, the basically the oscillation, the, the clock frequency of the of the driver. Um, so that was that square wave that we put in from the function generator. Uh, but this sine wave moved back and forth according to the distance, um, and that's obviously how many wavelengths it takes for the um, for the sound to reach the um, uh, the microphone. 
Uh, and the final thing we learned about was using the in using inductors um, to smooth out frequency, to basically smooth out res the response to a single harmonic, as well as uh, increase voltage and hence current. Um, so therefore, you would actually be have you would actually have a louder device. And just before we dropped off, I, I mentioned how you can actually make your uh, the resonant frequency of your system a little bit more stable by adding an external resonator, um, which can which even if you do have a tracking um, mechanism in place, it does still help match the uh, output impedance of your amplifier to your um, to the drive of the piezo. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, definitely check out the description for links uh, related to um, more information as well as the uh, links for all of the other videos through my website Learn Piezo and my uh, consulting platform. Thanks for watching and see you next time.